Howdy! My name is Lisa Snyder and I'm the author of Photoshop CS5 The Missing Manual and co-author of iPhoto 11 The Missing Manual. I'm also the chief evangelist of iStockphoto.com, the world's most fabulous royalty-free image, illustration, video, and audio resource. I hope you enjoy the following step-by-step -step tip. One of the biggest problems you're liable to encounter in pet photography is that of the dreaded animal white eye. And that's going to be the subject of our tutorial today. I'm going to show you how to fix it non-destructively. So here we have a picture of Devil Dog. <laughs> and the first thing we want to do is we want to select the offending peoples. And anytime you want to create a selection, it's good to take a moment and look at the selection and go through all your various tools and see which one's going to work the best for you. Well, in this situation, since the area we want to select is round, we could indeed use the elliptical marquee. However, since the offending area is a solid color, it's white, it's easier to use the magic wand. So I'm going to press W to grab the magic wand, and I'm going to click once within one of the offending pupil areas. Now to add to my selection, I can press and hold the shift key, and then I can mouse over to the other eye, Hold down the shift and you get a tiny little plus sign below the magic wand cursor. Click again and now we've got both eyes selected. The next thing you want to do is trot up to the options bar and click the refine edge button. And that's going to allow us to fine tune our selection just a hair. And what we want to do is we want to type in 0.5 for the feather amount. Now this number may vary according to the uh, resolution of your image. This is a fairly low resolution image, so uh, a half a pixel feather is just fine. You can also use the contract or expand options to increase or decrease the size of your selection. So I'm going to increase our selection to about 10 just to make sure I get all the way to the edges of that white people area. Also in the Refine Edge dialog box, you can press the F key, that's F as in Frank, to toggle through the various preview options. You've got five of them down there toward the bottom of this dialog box, but I like just pressing the F key to toggle through. On this particular image, the red overlay of Quick Mask works the best, but depending upon the colors in your image, you'll find that one of these shows you your selection preview a little bit better than the other one. So I'm going to press OK when I'm finished. Oh, one thing to remember about the settings in this dialog box is that they're sticky, meaning that if you change them, the next time you use this dialog, they're still going to be there. So you'll need to zero them out in some cases. So go ahead and press OK. Now that we've got our selection all ready to go, I'm going to add a new layer onto which we're going to add our new black pupils. So go ahead and press the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel, and I'm going to double click the layer name itself and name it pupils just so I know what's going on. And now I'm going to fill it with black. Sure, you could trot up to the edit menu and choose fill, but a faster option is to take a peek at the color chips at the bottom of your layers panel, way down here, and make sure that they're set to the default to black and white. If they're not, press D to get that done, and then press the X key until black hops on top. X will flip-flop your color chips for you. As soon as you have black as the foreground color chip, you can use a keyboard shortcut to fill it, and that is Option Delete on a Mac, Alt Backspace on a PC. And once you've done that, go ahead and press Command D or Control D on a PC to deselect and get rid of your marching ants. Now there's only one other thing we need to do to make her eyes look real, and that is to add a reflection, or as I like to call it, a glint. So what you want to do is create another new layer. Using the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel, we're going to double click this one and name it Cleverly Glint. And now, let's grab the regular brush tool, just press B, and you want to trot up to the options bar in the brush preset picker, and we want to pick a fairly small soft edge brush, and you know they're soft because they have a soft edge as opposed to a hard edge, like these guys right here. So go ahead and grab one. It doesn't really matter what size you get because you can always mouse over to your document and use your keyboard shortcuts of the left bracket key. Hello. Sometimes it likes you to close that brush preset picker first. You can use the left bracket key to go down and brush size or the right bracket key to go up and brush size. So when you're adding the glint, you want to make it fairly small. And it doesn't really matter where you place the glint, except that you want to make sure you place the glint in the same place in each eye or else things get really funky. <laughs> so go ahead and click once on one eye. Oh, I forgot to set my, my color chips to... Um, 
to a white foreground chip. So go ahead and press X so that white hops on top because now we're going to be painting with white, which is what we want. Hard to see a black glint. So go ahead and click one time to add the glint in one eye. Go ahead and mouse over to the other eye and add the glint in about the same place. There we go. Last but not least, let's lower the layer opacity of the glint layer. And I like to just hover with my cursor above the text field next to the, the actual area of the field where I can enter a number. If you hover your cursor over the text field label, then you get a little scrubby cursor. And I like to just drag it down a little bit. And you'll probably find that somewhere around 70%. Uh, 65, 70, something like that is going to look good. Now you can save your Photoshop document as a PSD file in case you ever need to come back to it. And you've got a sweet little puppy dog instead of devil dog. See you next week. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll check out my full video workshops on creativelive.com. You can also connect with me on Twitter or on Facebook. In fact, if you click like on my Facebook fan page, you can get a free two-page cheat sheet each for Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, and iPhoto. And if you'd like to grab 10 free high-resolution images from iStock Photo, plus receive a discount of 20% on your first purchase of 50 or more credits, then you can visit my landing page at iStockPhoto.com slash Lisa Snyder. Until next time, may the creative force be with you.